gives me great pleasure to introduce Ivana Ivkovic, who was born in Belgrade, Serbia, and holds an, a master's degree in drawing from the Faculty of Fine Arts in Belgrade. Since 2002, she has exhibited in several very successful solo shows in Belgrade, New York, Dusseldorf, Vienna, Bodrum, Basel, Calcutta, and Co 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 Copenhagen, <laughs> as well as many group shows internationally. She's been a two-time finalist of the prestigious Politica Prize for the Best Exhibition and the holder of the Kulturkontakt Vienna Austria Artist and Resident Scholarship for 2008. She's exhibited her work extensively internationally. Her works are also in domestic and international museums and private collections. Ivana lives and works in her home city of Belgrade. Her exhibition at Gallery B312, along with two other Serbian artists, opens tomorrow night at 6 p.m. 6:30. 6:30 p.m. And there will also be a, um, a, a roundtable conference on Sunday at Gallery B312. Tonight, after the lecture, we invite you all to join us on the fourth floor of this building for our reception. And now, please join me in welcome Ivan Kupovic. with this from this distance okay so hi hello to everybody thank you for coming I'm very glad to see you public <laughs> in such a huge number first um, uh, sorry for my not so well English maybe it will be some difficulties to understanding and to try to express it and explain everything but I will do my best also <laughs> when I was uh, writing uh, some notes for this conversation I was writing everything. Hi, hello, thank you. <laughs> My name is Ivana. And the girl from gallery, Isabel, if she's here, thank you, Isabel. She was printing me that, and she said, uh -huh, this is in the uh, case that you forget your name. <laughs> okay. I didn't forget my name, and yes, first of all, thank you for all people from Concordia, Ingrid and Emily, with whom I had a conversation, yes, and of course from the people from Gallery B3012, uh, which is an amazing place, uh, Montreal is an amazing city, even if it's cold, <laughs> it's so warm in the same time, and yes, really a um, great opportunity to have um, to have a chance to speak about uh, work and the uh, way of uh, I live my artistic life or whatever. So in that, in that, uh, when I'm about that, I um, I was thinking what will be the best way to present the art or whatever it's good for you to know or understand from the my background from where I'm coming. So I just decided to have a um, regular conversation about um, how to explain my life in general and that will lead one subject to another. I will not speak about uh, certain work or projects, it will be more like a slideshow of my uh, uh, things. Um, basically I'm doing drawings but then I'm also doing some other things, objects, installation, photography, so it will be a mix mash of everything, it's not chronological. I did it um, purposely like that because not to be boring, you know, maybe like surprise, <laughs> suddenly it coming something very different and just like that. So I will put now slideshow. And yes, it was really, uh, how to say, uh, for example, we ha we're having a colloquium also on the Sunday. I'm not doing any marketing, uh, but it would be great if you can come also because we will speak about identity as in a subject of uh, having it or losing it while you are artist. And also one of the very important thing about identity is, uh, 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 how to say, it's very, very uh, often nomadic uh, style of life with which artists have. And uh, I can say for myself that I'm a bit of a nom nomadic artist because I'm coming from a country which is not so big and uh, of course after the war everything becomes so, how to say, divided in the a, in a place of ex-Yugoslavia. So anyways, we are functioning like a small scene and it's very, uh, how to say, uh, hard to be a uh, contemporary artist only in a local context. So some, uh, somehow, if you imagine the Europe is uh, not so big, yeah, for us it's a normal to go outside 
And I would say the first step from uh, after the Serbia, after the Balkany for Europe, it's Vienna. It's a kind of a first city center for all the artists from Serbia are having a, um, how to say, opportunity to exhibit there because of the funds uh, <coughs> and the uh, artist in residence program which supports uh, part of uh, uh, Eastern and uh, Southeastern Europe and the Balkany region. So I started to do re the residency mostly in Germany and Austria, and after that, uh, one thing led to another. So after the Europe, I just got the need to go uh, in the other places, and America, of course, <coughs> Canada, then uh, Asia, Africa. <laughs> I'm not stopping. And um, somehow my travelings and my stays in residences become a very important part of the way how I'm, uh, how my work is functioning. So everything is in connection to a certain space or place when I'm spending my time. And it's always from two to six months that I'm staying in a different country or a different city. And yeah, that is enough time for me to get to know the place, uh, start some uh, project or even finishing. And it's more like a site-specific kind of thinking about art. <coughs> but also I'm uh, collecting the memories, the history facts from the places I'm visiting. And after that, uh, creating a work also in my, uh, in my home uh, country and home city. Sometimes it's cheaper production. <laughs> so you're always going to a product. Uh, uh, we are traveling or uh, using these, uh, how to say, opportunities for artists, uh, mostly in connection uh, to uh, art production, you know, so it depends a lot uh, of that. If you want to create art, then you must <coughs> lead yourself to funds and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So yes, uh, uh, when I think about that, uh, I'm not sure. It, it's also, it's the fact that I'm nomadic because of uh, how the art scene in the world functioning today. But I also think that it's a matter of my character or temperament, how you say that. So you never know what is the order. Is it the art, the one who is calling you to travel, or uh, you travel because you are like that, and then you are uh, creating your art in the context of that. But uh, for example, for me, what's interesting, because the people are saying when they saw my work somewhere in some places, if that it's uh, so related to a local uh, subject, or has not related to a local subject, but has a, how to say, a um, sensibility of, uh, of Balkany region, for example, of Serbia and all that. I'm not sure, because I'm using so many of uh, different uh, <coughs> references on uh, different artists, different uh, uh, history parts uh, and all about my work is that mixing uh, totally uh, different uh, settings in uh, in one new platform because for me that's the way how I uh, think and how uh, how I functioning and for me that that uh, represents a state of freedom if you can make your own platform of your own rules and uh, Sometimes that is fulfilled with some irony, with the world irony, self-irony. Sometimes I'm starting like this work. Since I met you, I have no peace. This is, a, uh, for example, a good start. Uh, and the work after that. Uh, for, uh, remember this one out. <laughs> I will speak about that. So uh, uh, lots of my works are starting from very, very intimate, uh, how to say, um, subjects. Like very, for example, female, male, uh, gender relations, uh, relations like that, uh, struggles in life, very like uh, very intimate and emotional subjects. And at the end, the work is more, the, for example, critiques they say or people are representing is like a pol to be a political. So what I can see, it's, uh, you can never divide those things. Uh, I'm not now speaking certainly about some conceptual work or uh, if you really want to say something for myself, uh, something clearly. This is a work from uh, Montreal exhibition in 2012. So yeah, the, uh, I'm jumping from the subject to subject. I wanted to say that, uh, yeah, I can never divide political uh, or non-political in my work, intimate or public. Everything is, uh, if you ask me in my art on the borderline between very personal things and uh, the world that surrounds me. So um, 
um, I <coughs> left my work to be open for, uh, how to say, for communication with the people, and I never have a, such a strict uh, uh, story behind the work. It, there is a story always, but uh, sometimes my work are more clever than me, or uh, having to say much more than I am. So I don't know. That's it about uh, some kind of uh, of, uh, of a general story. But I also thought that it will be interesting for you to hear more about uh, Belgrade <coughs> or a region from which I coming. And. Um, yeah, this, for example, it's a work about, uh, it, you know, remember the photo Great Day in Harlem about uh, jazz musicians, uh, they're living in um, the famous jazz musicians of the 50s in Harlem. I made, uh, <coughs> I made a reference to that with my, uh, uh, how to say, neighbors from the building from which I'm, where I'm born and where I lived for the first of 20 years of my life. So yeah, that I there is a, uh, how to say, lots of the work that I referencing on my uh, surrounding in back to my home country, yes. Uh, but I think everything is in that struggle, in also in my works. Should I live for a good and leave uh, Belgrade permanently? Or should I uh, continue to be a nomad like this? And then it's naturally come to a point of question, how old I am, do I have time to be like that all of my life, just to travel and not settle down uh, anywhere? And it's still uh, like an open question, but of course you, are, um, you can assume that the matter of uh, asking that question in uh, Serbia, it's really related to our economy, uh, economical and political situation, which is uh, never good, <laughs> as I remember, as far as I remember, uh, as far as I can remember my life. So we had, of course, 90s, which bring us the wars and very, very turbulent periods. And after that, we are entering the zone of a never-ending transition period, which means that we are in transition to a, like a capitalism, or what they say, neoliberalism. And that part of the process is still on. So we thought it will be like five years at most, but it's like 15 years of that never-ending <laughs> transition. So Belgrade has a very, very, and a Serbian general difficulties with the cultural, the budget for culture. Yes, and every year you have uh, less and less and less money for art. So finally it was just like a zero <laughs> money last year for <coughs> almost all projects that we are uh, having and uh, huge festivals and art festivals too. So it's a really tough story. It's very not good for, for, for us. And I would say especially for contemporary visual art. Somehow people are better at, uh, with communicating to uh, musical festivals, with the music, with classical music, even also with the f movies, which are somehow you know, bringing more money. But contemporary art in Serbia has difficulties because uh, we have uh, two great museums and none of them is working because the buildings are very old and there is no money for example they're uh, shut the doors of 2005 or i would say 2007 so more than eight years of non-working museums which is very very bad so from that point of view you are after some point realizing that you don't have uh, so many spaces to exhibit as an artist and it's naturally that you have a need to to move. Uh, I'm trying to explain that because uh, as far as I can see in Canada it's a totally different situation because it's a huge country and of course with many options of fundings and uh, many different spaces and uh, I don't know, maybe uh, I don't know a good, uh, uh, good enough your own situation and there is always the struggles of being a contemporary artist today. But I would say that our situation back home is uh, very bad, so I'm coming back to that uh, nomadic story. Why is that like that? But anyways, it's not just a, a misery and pity of a story. I had a great opportunity to visit uh, different countries, different cultures, and in, uh, 
I can say in last year I was inspired by uh, very, how to say, uh, far away exotic countries. And I had a two long residencies, one in Mor Morocco, deep in Sahara, <coughs> on the borderline of Morocco and Algier. And it was, uh, it, it's, it's a young residency program um, situated in the heart of Sahara, and it's like an artist retreatment <laughs> more than anything else. So you are in the middle of Sahara, there is nothing, just a small uh, barbarian village of uh, 10 houses, and one artist center with a, with a great uh, opportunity to work isolated of, uh, of a civilization. So I spent there like two months, and after that I have a residency program in uh, Calcutta, in India, uh, uh, in one village near Calcutta on the borderline with Bangladesh, which is also so strange because it's so crowded place uh, and so out of out of mm, everything in the same in the same um, in the same time. Very very how to say. Uh, both of those situations were very uh, tough because of, uh, for example, weather. While in Sahara was uh, almost 50 some days. And also in India, with a humidity level of uh, 100%. Uh, uh, but um, I found that putting myself in a different context and having uh, even exhibitions in, a, in, a, in a so far away, how to say, places, uh, it's something uh, new in my uh, practice and something that is uh, also necessary like having, uh, a, for example, residencies in New York or Berlin on some of the art world centers. So for me that uh, have the same uh, intensity and same, uh, uh, how to say, meaning, of, of meaning uh, for me as an artist. And uh, yes, that was the uh, first uh, uh, first eight months of my of my year I spent in in, in Morocco and in, in uh, India. And after that, I started to thinking about the show in Montreal about the work. And I had an opportunity, a great one, to get a residency, uh, the same one like my friend Carolyn from <laughs> Montreal in Linz in Austria. And I um, I will explain how my work uh, on this exhibition here, how I created it. And that explains uh, a lot of that type of life which I live as an artist and type of a production. So, um, because we are in this exhibition here representing a Serbian um, contemporary art scene, but only female artists, it's not, uh, how to say, completely gender related in a sense of it's not a feminist uh, art, but it's just a. Uh, uh, it's just a decision of the curators to have a, a female artist here. And the three of us are from Belgrade, basically, and uh, the rest three are uh, living in Canada. So as in, you know, they moved to Canada before. I don't know, it's a different of, uh, of uh, it's a different period that they live in Canada, but they are Canada residents. So uh, yes, when I when I uh, got the opportunity for this exhibition, curator told me that I will uh, that I will have a drawing because uh, or one drawing because he wanted to show uh, my drawings. Yes, and uh, then I thought, what should I do? It's so uh, I would I, I I wanted to have a big work, you know. And sometimes you know how in art you you connect uh, a certain space, gallery space, for example, with a work. Of course, and then uh, when I saw the pictures and photos of Gallery B thirty twelve, I um, I wanted to have a large scale work, and it was complicated. So I decided to buy a paper in Europe. It's co complicated to finish it here because I have only one month residency. So I bought a paper in Vienna. I started my work in Linz. Then I moved it with my car to Belgrade. <laughs> then I was drawing it in Belgrade. Then I, I was transporting it in a canalization thing <laughs> because there is no map big enough through a plane to Montreal. Then I lost it in Frankfurt because it was delay of storm, <laughs> ice, uh, whatever. So I was uh, in such a <laughs> say panic <coughs> in my work. And finally I got it here. So it's kind of funny story, you know, it's like a official contemporary art history, but it's so mishmash of how you can manage to do everything. And finally, I have my drawing here on the wall, still standing. 
And that's it. That's an explanation <coughs> of how how things are are functioning. Still, I I can uh, I can have from my point of view. I don't know from my artist practice. And yes, uh, I will see just to check how much more time I have. Okay, maybe I can um, I can speak uh, a bit more of, of my works because I'm I'm speaking too fast. <laughs> no, I have so much time. I didn't plan this. <laughs> okay. this for example, um, yeah. Uh, I uh, in 2008, uh, and this story is important because it's an, in connection uh, with the work here, and I hope that you will come for exhibition and show and see my work in live. Uh, in 2008, I was six months uh, traveling in um, Mexico and then some other countries of South uh, America, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Colombia, and Uruguay. And um, yeah, it was a very uh, important uh, six months of my life. I didn't know that it was uh, happened. It was not a residency program. My best friend moved to Mexico City, and my sister. Uh, moved to Chile, Santiago, so I had a big tour <laughs> on the uh, Central and South uh, South America, and um, uh, I collected so many of things there. Um, how to say visually? Um, I didn't know what uh, what to expect because it was my first time, <coughs> and I was really open for for a new experience in in life, but. Um, it happened something which I didn't really expect. It's a, a huge similarity between Balkany region and uh, Latin America. After that, uh, when I made my first uh, show about uh, questions and uh, and the issues that I collected in Latin America, for example, this is the, the show that I'm speaking about. We have some lectures during the show in Belgrade, and there were some politicians also and socialists. They were speaking about Latin America questions and matters, and I didn't know that there is so much of similarity and connections uh, to a <coughs> way how, how the countries they're functioning and the tension. It's so politically similar to tension in Balkan region, and maybe because of that, I felt a bigger empathy, and empathy uh, is a very important uh, um, issue in my in my artworks and very important how to say, leading, uh, leading uh, point in, in it. And uh, I will never say for my artwork again, I'm saying that it's political, but there is a certain uh, social empathy for, for the things that I'm finding, um, how to say, uh, uh, maybe connected to a way how I uh, how my youth was in uh, Serbia or how my thinking about world is generally. So they are more about some universality of the problems that surround us and that we are and the problems that we are consuming by being just alive here. But uh, I'm not able to see uh, more uh, how to say more specific things uh, about. Uh, more specific political statement statements in, in it. I just see a more general, more mm -hmm. universal story of of empathy. But it was, uh, for example, this show after Latin America. I um, in Peru. I, it was exhibition about 20 years of terrorism in in Peru because they had a huge pro problem for uh, 1980 up to uh, 2000 with the terrorism there and with the. Uh, very, very uh, huge problem of missing person, the same like in Mexico. And for example, this photo, I found it in a, in, a, in that exhibition, the photo of six women standing in the front of a message uh, uh, that they say, we are now fighting for a better Latin America without uh, missing persons. And there is a famous note, uh, they, took us al they uh, took you alive, we want you back alive, in a sense of, they're mostly a woman uh, movements of, uh, how to say, trying to find a solution to uh, state to react more on the question of missing persons. That same question you have in Peru, in Mexico, uh, and in most of the Latin America countries. So I found this uh, uh, photo very disturbing because uh, they were 
standing in the front of camera uh, and in front of that message very uh, present in the moment, you know, and there, they, that fight was so, how to say, um, I find it so sensing and so big, and then I decided to do a kind of homage of uh, of that because of I don't know I found some 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 state of for me that was a story about presence and absence and uh, even present I mean we are present in the moment and for it, for me those six moments are uh, very present in a, in a, in in a moment present in life. So uh, yes, I, I decided to to create a huge drawing because only thing uh, when you are dealing with a with a subject like missing person and even that's a history of another country and so uh, very uh, sensitive questions you need as an artist from my point of view to be uh, even more sensitive and even more uh, careful about how you're approaching the subject. So for me, decision to do a huge drawing with my physical effort put it in in it in a in, a, in order that i needed to draw it for a three months on my knees <laughs> like it was more like a, like a monk doing with a small graphite pencil it was a huge piece of paper so that physical effort was uh, some kind of an uh, my homage to their fight and my way to approach a subject which is which is not so related to me but i find it how to say so close to me so most of the other uh, works that I'm doing are also, and the subject <coughs> that I'm dealing with in, in my in my uh, work is uh, uh, how to say uh, I I understand something just by uh, emotion, not so with my uh, brain and my rational part of uh, existing. It's more. It's more like an irrational and more emotional decision what I want to do. Uh, and I don't know why, <laughs> but I just know wh wh uh, that I need to do that. For example, this work is also interesting and says uh, uh, something more about my country and my city. This building um, was constructed at the end of uh, 19th century and beginning of uh, 20th century. Uh, as a, uh, and, it, and it's a huge cultural heritage. Uh, it was, um, how to say, uh, the one uh, man who was very, uh, very powerful and rich in that time by trading, um, he became rich by trading the prams, you know, that dried plums, prams for eating, and uh, also pigs. And he became very rich and, may, uh, and um, left to a Belgrade city a huge number of very, very important buildings. And he left everything because he was uh, without family to Belgrade University and the Belgrade city. So you have a situation after, I don't know how many, 100 years, having all these buildings almost devastated. So uh, it was a, a huge action of uh, people of one, um, uh, one festival in Belgrade to make a hotspot of dead buildings to represent uh, how is our treatment to our heritage and what we are doing to the buildings which are very important and we are treating them as an, uh, just just uh, trash or mm, from, it's, it's amazing how, how many of the, uh, how many uh, economical uh, surrounding can influence of uh, mind setting of people to be not so aware of the things that are happening around them and uh, in the city itself and we have a lot of changing of uh, of a city just because of that nobody cares and in that climate that nobody cares very huge bad things can happen you know it there is no resistance people are just tired of fighting for a better life so my work was about uh, was about our heritage because that guy he was a uh, yeah, trade with the prams, and he managed to 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 have a huge amount of uh, of money, and gave everything to to us. Yes, and that that is our heritage. So by putting the prams, and this work refers to Felix Gonzalez Torres. Maybe you know, it's a Cuban artist with a very famous uh, uh, group of the works with the name Untitled. Uh, a lot of his work uh, with the name Untitled and the name. <coughs> that refers of a number of the work. But he was uh, making the works of uh, how of bonbons, 
for example, in a, in a, in a, in one p. <coughs> How to say that? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a word that I'm missing. And then by consuming abundance, public are uh, consuming the human body. For me, that was just uh, <coughs> referring to these prams are also the body of this building, the body of the man who left uh, his, uh, how to say, heritage to, uh, to us. And by eating the prams, for example, you, uh, the, at the end of the exhibition, nothing was on the floor. People actually eat it, even if this is dirty like a hell, <laughs> they eat it. So what we have, we have nothing, then it's a really, that's it, you know. We, uh, I wanted to, uh, people to be aware of how we treat our uh, culture, how we treat our, our life, ourselves. So I try to, yeah, I try to say that. Uh, this is the work, for example, from which, which I uh, told when I was speaking about political or not political, mm -hmm. this is a very good example. Um, since I met you, I have no peace. It's a literal translation. Uh, I just woke up one day with that sentence in my, uh, in my mind, and I didn't know what is about that. Since I met you, I have no peace. In English, it came to my mind in English, in inter integral version. And I thought, uh, what is this, what is this, and tried to Google it. Of course, what we're doing, we're Googling it, everything. So two things came. Uh, first one was, this is a literal translation of a very famous folk song of one uh, very famous singer, Tseca, from Balkany. And it's really important figure in, uh, in our country and the region, because she's officially a uh, uh, wife of uh, ex, uh, because he's killed, died, dead now a uh, very uh, huge war criminal and in the same time she is very very famous singer so you have a very confusing situation the wife of a war criminal being the most popular person in a whole region and war was about the region so yes uh, it was a literal translation of, of her song in Serbian and also was a part of uh, uh, in a bible uh, there is a book of Yov, and there is a part with uh, exactly this uh, message. So I said to myself, it's not um, it's not coincidence that this came to your mind. And I'm, uh, as I said before, leading my intuition to I keeping my intuition <coughs> to lead me in the work. So I said this uh, when I work with the text, and I work with text a lot. I'm using the messages which uh, have a potential to say something, and uh, always there is a double or triple meaning. Of, uh, of, uh, of a message itself. So uh, then I decided to, to find, a, I don't know why, I decided to find a company uh, uh, or a fabric which produces a Persian carpet still, and I found one in Serbia, it's still the only one in Balkan region. And then I put my drawing, I woven together my drawing and the message uh, together with that Persian motif. And at the end, when the work was done, uh, it was so, how to say, <laughs> yeah, that was a political, because you have American Eagle as a symbol, which I didn't uh, put it on purposely to be American Eagle. Uh, uh, it just, I don't know, it's my obsession with eagles. And uh, on, the, on the Persian motif, and it's a kind of twisted east-west situation, and all, all together with this uh, message, since I met you, I have no peace. Uh, and peace can refer also on the war. But for myself, the work was about my uh, state with myself, how I feel when I meet him, <laughs> as I'm trying to understand myself and meet myself through my life. I never have a peace with myself. And also, it was about uh, my uh, relation with a man and with that emotional yeah, thing when you have in a relationship, when you're meeting the one and never have a peace enough with, a, with, a, with an ad, uh, another person. So yeah, it's a, like a multi-layered multi -layered work. And uh, even if I'm speaking now about my um, original ideas and processes, I'm rather leaving uh, this part to be to be understand by uh, by public itself, by one itself, and um, maybe it's it's uh, always 
the best way because yeah that's it art should be understandable or uh, it, sh it should be we should feel it by by our by our souls or emotions whatever so yes uh, this is one of my last uh, shows but maybe I will decide to put more of um, uh, residency uh, places because it's interesting after so many of works <laughs> now I, I <coughs> collected some of the photographs of the places uh, where I work as an artist and spending time those are different uh, different countries and different places and maybe it's interesting to see vari var variety of uh, of uh, surroundings and uh, yeah and spaces when artists are living and and working. For example, this is a uh, this was a very very big privilege in Turkey. We all had a house in a Hockney style <laughs> for ourselves with a swimming pool and everything. So sometimes we are very very lucky <laughs> as an artist to have a to have uh, fantastic uh, opportunities of working by the sea, for example. And um, I think that process of finding uh, residency for myself also have uh, included that uh, decision where I, where I uh, see myself, in which ambience. So sometimes I just pick the country, okay, I would like to visit Morocco, and then I'm starting to search and do research of uh, residences in Morocco. Sometimes, of course, people call you somewhere or you have arranged things, but if I do, uh, and it's a huge part of my work, finding uh, places for exhibition and residency. Uh, this is uh, Sahara, when I was speaking at the beginning of the middle of Sahara thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some, uh, mostly I'm s doing research <laughs> by myself and trying to find uh, places which will inspire me uh, in my next projects or whatever. So yeah, uh, let me see if I have uh, five more minutes <laughs> of conversation. I think it will be enough for you to see um, to see some different different things which have become collected. And uh, yeah, also I find it very important to say that here in Montreal. I find it a uh, conversation with people about art, people from gallery, people from university, very, very easy and very, how to say, uh, uh, I find it uh, that art here is very, uh, contemporary art, visual art, very important uh, issue. And it's uh, not everywhere like, like, like here, <laughs> you know, and it's uh, for me, uh, it's really a pleasure to be a part of that kind of treatment. For example, you have uh, many of uh, very rich European institutions of art, but some sometimes you feel like just you are a part of a budget. You came and they give you money and say, whatever you do, just do. And sometimes as, um, it's not so good. I feel very connected to this place and to people here, and I really feel that I have a, how to say, a opportunity for somebody to listen to me and a, like a real public. Yeah, with whom I can communicate, and I said to that uh, there was a statement uh, which we will use on the on the colloquium on Sunday. And a very big thing about art is that art is a uh, almost always a lonely process for me. So you need the people because, uh, anyways, the production is very uh, how to say the production of work, creating of work. It's a lonely process, and I think. Yeah, uh, that loneliness is uh, screaming <laughs> from <laughs> from me. So yeah, thank you again for for coming and for listening to me. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, open it up for some questions. And speak about yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, that from 1980 till 2000 in Peru there were um, missing people, and you did a, an artwork based on mm -hmm. that, right? Um, so 
you took this from a photograph, or did you meet some of the women that um, had family members disappeared? Yeah, for example, this book was, uh, because I didn't know that I will do that. When I was uh, at the touristical in Peru, I took a photo of the exhibition. Uh, it, the name of the exhibition was Para Recordar, to remember, and then uh, uh, Terrorism in Peru from 1980 to 2000. And uh, after when I came, uh, there was two images that was really um, important to me. One with a woman's and one, the other one with the empty beds. So it was my story about absence, uh, with the empty bed, uh, absence with the empty bed situation and presence <coughs> as a six woman was sitting. So I, uh, when I started to think what kind of work I should do, I did a bit of research and uh, I was in a contact with the people from the museum. They uh, give me, like, a, how to say, uh, um, that I can do that, yeah, that I can use the original photo document to be inspiration for myself. But those women are, the, the photo is very, very old and they're just uh, a certain women from the photo maybe that doesn't exist anymore. But I never um, had an opportunity to make any kind of contact because I never came back to Peru with the uh, with the local uh, groups of women who are fighting still for the right, for the missing person. And I think that movements are now pretty much, how to say, uh, not so, in a not so huge number like it was before. So it was just uh, more like an uh, homage, not so connected to a, to a happenings now, more like a documentary or archive part of the uh, process. <coughs> yeah. 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 If my memory is good, you said that this weekend you will have like a round table uh, around the, uh, about the question of identity. Yeah, it will be colloquium on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, it starts at 9, and I think it's uh, uh, up to 6 or 7. There is info about that. Yeah. And there will be four artists from uh, exhibition. Sure, um, I just want to maybe short, shortcut this uh, round table because the question of identity was quite interesting uh, regarding uh, the way you describe actually your lifestyle, like mm -hmm. the way you're traveling around, yeah. And, yeah. and also to Serbia, but I was curious to uh, know, maybe as a preview of this conversation uh, this weekend, what is your personal uh, um, thinking about it? Yeah, identity. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, uh, it's also a question for co uh, I said honestly in the first uh, sentence that I, uh, it's a cliche, very big huge one, but I really feel like a, a citizen of the world. For me, I uh, I don't in that way, emotionally or irrationally, rationally, we know that there is a borders and different yeah, countries and limitations, but I don't feel that, uh, or I feel that as an oppressor. I want to avoid that in a sense of having a, a opportunity and freedom to move as I want to that makes me feel a less claustrophobic. I'm not saying that I'm claustrophobic because I'm Serbian. Uh, maybe Serbia is a small country. It's not, uh, again, I'm saying it's not a political statement, I'm claustrophobic, I need to move on. It's more that I'm claustrophobic because it's, uh, it's my temperament is like that, my character. So for me, question of identity, but still, you know, that is how I think. And then people see uh, from outside something else. Maybe I'm not aware of uh, my, uh, 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 how to say, of, uh, of importance of uh, a question of identity in my works and in myself. Maybe that's my struggle with that, you know. Maybe I'm really feeling the pressure of being uh, uh, attached to certain identity and trying to, you know, avoid that. So I would say, it's uh, I'm not feeling it as an uh, uh, as in something um, crucial, <coughs> but still uh, my uh, way of how I live describes that at at, at, at very important question. So I don't know <coughs> the answer. I don't know the straight answer. It's more like a, it's it's still that I'm searching for for an answer. I'm too young. <laughs> too young for identity quest. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I want to stay young. Okay. Uh, about the 
Uh huh. Uh, yeah, you have two works. Uh, one of them is since I met you. Okay. Uh, I have no peace. And the other one is far away. Cage. Yeah, far away. Uh, can you compare these two pieces in this term? I mean, in terms uh, of I the yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, <coughs> Um, for example, that far away cage, uh, it's um, just a game word with, the, you know, what is Faraday cage? Faraday was a scientist who invented a, a system of uh, saving the buildings uh, and uh, system of saving the <coughs> places of a lightning, lightning strikes. So it's a kind of, um, how to say, metal, uh, metal things that keeps you safe from lightning. So I had a, <laughs> I had a happening in my apartment, there was a lightning strike and it was very terrible. <laughs> so I made a decision to make a work about, about that because lots of my works are about protection and maybe it's a good uh, connecting point to your question because uh, protection can be a very personal thing that we need, protection in our lives from somebody else, from, from ourselves to be safe. And also protection in the sense of uh, so mo more social related things to be protected as a citizen. So it's a kind of, for example, this work, far, far the Cage, you are inside of the cage with knives. Knives are uh, in the metal rods. So you have fears that coming from yourself as a knife and uh, you're protected from world outself. So somewhere in between in that border of rod is also the between the, the, the how to say, it's our, uh, limit of ourselves, you know. So we have uh, inner fears and we have uh, outside fears. And on that tiny border, everything is happening because it's a meeting point of those fears. And that is also a meeting point of public and private because um, sometimes you are concerned about private things and something which comes from outside makes you feel uh, also uh, anxious. So uh, yeah, my work's about that border. That's it. <laughs> Maybe it's a good idea. Yeah, you want to ask a girl there. Yeah, I was changing my question. Because um, you're talking about empathy and dealing with fear and anxiety. And, um, I'm wondering if you have another, other than your art practice, if you have some kind of practice in your life that is sort of happening tangentially, like alongside that's helping you get to know yourself and helping uh -huh. you to confront fear. I have a, a psychotherapy <laughs> <laughs> for many, many years. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan of uh, psychology also and psychiatry, um, of therapy that's itself. And I wanted uh, uh, from of my life to study some theoretical things more than uh, faculty of fine arts. Because there was so, uh, so small, uh, how to say, piece of theory in our studies. It, uh, it was all practical, practical. And I started with uh, studying philosophy, and then I just, uh, I was not so smart for that. So <laughs> I switched to, <laughs> switched to an artist. I'm, I'm not saying that artists are not smart. <laughs> <laughs> but from my perspective, like philosophy was so oh, amazing thing. And uh, somehow I, uh, I decided that the, um, for me, dealing with the soul is more interesting than dealing with the body. So instead of doing the physical practices, <laughs> I'm doing the mental practices. And it's very, uh, no, just, uh, it's, a, it's a joke, but it's not a joke. It's important part of my life. Uh, because I felt the need for introspection and maybe because of art. They say a lot, you know, uh, for example, psychoanalysis, uh, it's, uh, it's very old now. They have so many of theory against it. So it's uh, it, it's better not to open that subject. But anyways, uh, people like this speaking with me and saying, oh, it's a bad, very bad for your art to go to analysis. You know, it's not, but I don't <laughs> think so. I think that, <laughs> that we should always find a way to speak a bit with ourselves, it's even if it's a therapy or this or that. So for me, it's a, how to, how to say, um, maybe healthy way for understanding things. Yeah. Any uh, project of where we'd like to go for the uh, next, uh, for the next traveling and things yeah. inspiration? <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah, of course, I always have some uh, 
I am trying to arrange uh, one travel to, to, to Jordan, to Amman and Petra, because uh, there is some things that uh, really uh, interest me in the, uh, which you can see in the, my works, uh, Middle East, uh, uh, how to say, Econo iconography uh, and uh, symbolic. So I'm trying to arrange that, but I have, uh, mm, I have uh, some other plans uh, related to my work in Spain, which is good. Again, in India, <laughs> which is <laughs> even better. And that's it for, for now, as I know. And, and also, I would like to stay uh, and or to come back to Canada, because uh, I think um, uh, I see uh, uh, that I have a um, good this is a good territory for me for production of my work. I don't know, I feel free here. Yeah. You <coughs> feel more free in the summer. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> even more free. <laughs> <laughs> so we are not used to it. It was a terrible first couple of days because it's a huge change, but now it's, yeah. it's great. Well, that's another question. Uh, I'm just wondering how you feel about color. If you uh, like that, or avoiding color or... No, uh -huh, col color because of black and white. Of, uh, um, uh, I mean, I yeah. Before I was using a more colors in my works because the, in the beginning of my um, what say, career, art practice practice, I did a, a lot of drawings and uh, they were car 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 colorful. But I was always having a problem with painting. Today I was speaking with one of the students in a studio visit about painting or not. There is something about oil painting, which uh, and painting in general, which is not so good with my way of uh, how to say uh, acting. It's too slow. You need to wait. <laughs> so and um, I don't know. Yeah, I am having a problem with the uh, with the process. But um, uh, yeah, uh, I think it's more of a monochromy now in my work. But it's not. Uh, it's not always like that. It's change a bit. So, for example, the work that I have now exhibiting in uh, Montreal, it's with color. <laughs> so, yeah, it's changed from time to time. And I chose these photos to be black and white just in order to be more simple for people to consume it, because when you have a color, it's, it's, it's India, it's more like pump true and this is more documentary uh, than, than atmospherical. Yeah, but maybe they're also atmospherical. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think there's someone at the back, yeah. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Uh, hi. In the piece you had uh, the, of the room where there's the pile of plums, Yeah. Uh, there was something written on the wall. Yeah. I was curious to know if you wrote that and, yeah, and yeah. what it means. I forgot to mention, I didn't forget, but I, I'm so fast, you know, it's like a panic state. I want to tell everything and I don't <laughs> have enough time. So I, I didn't mention that that is important, that's a part of the work. And uh, handwriting and writing of uh, words, texts, uh, even just letters, uh, playing an important role in my uh, uh, in my artworks. And uh, that guy, with whom I speak, that he was uh, built that building and left all half of a bell to a bell <laughs> almost. Uh, he was uh, he didn't know how to read or speak. So we have it's uh, it's the end of the 19th century. So it was very very t uh, touchy for me. I discover uh, discover when I did a research about his life only one book that he left as his own property, one chair and one book. And the book is uh, Bram. You know uh, I don't know the name of exact name of uh, of uh, uh, I just know the surname. It's a Bram and it's an encyclopedia about animals. So it was a book about you know about the animals in uh, in the pictures because he cannot read. But at at the uh, at the entrance of the book there was a note with the uh, with the code of uh, Seth of a, a place where he keep money. So it was originally founded like a secret code with his uh, barely handwritings. So for me that was a, a connected treat to uh, uh, his own personality, because I wanted to mention him. He was he is very important, and uh, with the building, because everything was so, how to say, important about the money, but still his decision to left everything. Maybe I romanticized the story, but I think it's a huge thing to le le left everything to a Belgrade University. That, and in university, I found a book that has some, yeah, 
added meanings to myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, would you be able to speak a little bit about that uh, significance of ego? Ego. Um, you mentioned American yeah. ego, but then there's Serbian ego and some other yeah, medieval some other European eagles. nations. Yeah, yeah. This one is American because I was uh, 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 try to draw it from uh, that brand, American Eagle. Uh, clothes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not only eagles. I'm uh, kind of obsessed in my uh, drawings and in my life with birds. I have some fears of birds, and I think uh, that is maybe something from the very, very early childhood, maybe something that happens, I'm not remember, but I have problems with birds. So, uh, but even if I have a problem with birds, and I, I find them uh, not so pretty, uh, they are very common in my uh, iconography, uh, and I'm not sure, because my, uh, uh, a lot of my drawings are, uh, how to say, uh, they are automatically uh, created. They're not so uh, conceptually based. So I'm not sure why I'm using a bird as a symbol, but there must be a reason. But it's uh, true that a bird is a strong symbol in uh, uh, any kind of flags, for example, symbolic of the countries. So it must be that uh, when I'm uh, picking the symbols, uh, it must be <coughs> a co collective unconscious, uh, unconsci unconsciousness and universality of uh, symbols and their meaning has a very important role. But it was not by the purpose. It was, <coughs> I, as I'm saying again, took from my very personal notebook and related more to, for example, my representation of a man, uh, a certain man in my life, and man as a figure in general. But of course, when you are, you know, make, trying to find a um, this is a, a world uh, ruled by ages with a man and a politic is still mainly man thing, mainly, I'm saying mainly, and also in a country from which I'm coming, uh, yeah, even more. Uh, so that is a kind of an answer. Okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions, or there are, we might go, uh, invite you all to go upstairs and join us uh, for a reception. Four or seven, and yeah. uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you.